Hello, hello, and welcome. My name is Mini Betrayal, and this is Factorio, I guess. Uh, but this is something a little bit new. As you can tell from the title of this video, no doubt, um, this is a challenge uh, that I have been set. So, well, first, a little bit of backstory, I guess. So, um, a couple of weeks ago now, I went back to university. I am taking another degree, which I am hoping I will find more fulfilling in the long run, I suppose. Um, for those of you interested, I am doing IT, um, hoping to major in computer science. But anyway, um, this leaves me with a bit of extra time in my week, surprisingly. Well, no, not extra time, a little bit of downtime. Because depending on the day, um, I have about 30 minutes to an hour and a half, or something like that, just sitting on a train doing nothing. Now, I suppose I could be productive and do, you know, uni assignments or reading or this or that or the other. Um, but I have Factorio on my laptop, so I can do that instead. So, um, what I have done is started up this, this little challenge, this commuter challenge. Now, on my Discord, um, link in the description, there's been a little bit of conversation about how you would go about making a Sudoku puzzle. Um, so I've taken this as my first challenge, so thank you to Brainless Teddy of uh, my Discord for this idea. Um, and the, the challenge is basically to make a working Sudoku puzzle. Um, so with regards to the challenge itself, uh, this was all built literally on my laptop on a train. So it's not going to be the highest quality build, it's not going to be you know, ever so efficient. Um, it's not going to, you know, be ever so pretty, but it'll work. Um, and, oh, by the way, if you have ideas for, you know, challenges of your own, stick around to the end of the video, I'll let you know how you can tell me. But anyway, let's have a look at this. So this is what I've come up with. As you can see, not very pretty. Uh, but you can sort of see the, see what's going on here. So, firstly, if you don't know what a Sudoku is, um, I suggest you first crawl out of the rock you've been living under for the last 15 years or so. Um, but essentially, a Sudoku is a logic puzzle. You have a grid, uh, 9 by 9 as you can see here, each of these groups of lights is one grid cell. And it's 9 rows, 9 columns, and they are each split into 3 by 3 like, grids, I'll call them. And um, the puzzle is to fill in the 9 by 9 grid such that in every row, in every column, and in every grid, there is the numbers 1 through 9 exactly once, with nothing missed out and nothing repeated. Now, in an empty puzzle like this, that's a little bit trivial, but you're um, usually, at least, given, you know, a starting place. And depending how much information you're given to start off with, makes the puzzle easier or more difficult. So, well, let's zoom in here and have a look at one of these cells a little bit more closely. So each cell, uh, we've got, how many lights is that? We've got 49 lamps, so 7x7. Seven seven. We've got five combinators up the top, three down the side, and a constant combinator in the corner. This constant combinator is where you set the number. So if I click on that, I'll just drag that over here, uh, click on that. So we can set the numbers 1 through 9 by giving it a signal 1 through 9. So if I put a 1 signal in there, you can see it lights up with the number 1. If I change that to a number 2, we get a number 2, and so on. So 3 all the way up to 9. Um, now, if you uh, choose to play this yourself, a couple of things to bear in mind. Firstly, um, you don't really want to mess around with the value of that signal. You can see it messes around with the position a little bit there. Um, secondly, you can also pass a blue signal. If you pass a blue signal, it will turn it blue. The reason for that is because you want a way of telling sort of which numbers are, you know, definitely correct, which ones like come as part of the puzzle. So, um, to show you that, if I run over this way, I'll explain all of that in a minute, uh, I've got a couple of grids set up here um, that you can just copy and paste over the constant combinators. 
That one there is just all blanked out. There's nothing in that, so that gives you a blank puzzle. This way. Let's not do that. <laughs> if you copy the top section, this gives you a sort of easy to medium difficulty puzzle. So you can see there, these are all blue because these are all part of the initial conditions. Um, but if I were to solve this, you can come down here. If you look at this eighth row, you can see that there's only one number missing and the number we're missing is a one. So if I put a one in there, we get a one. Um, now, there's a couple of extra features this has. Um, it does not have an auto solver. I looked at some of the algorithms for that. None of them were particularly easy. They're doable, but not, you know, not on a train while commuting to and from university. Um, but the first main feature is error checking. So if I put, say, a three there, um, and I put a three over here as well, because we can only have one three in this row, we know at least one of these has got to be wrong. So if I come up to the top, this combinator up here has an X in it. If I turn it on, then if there are any conflicts like that, they will be shown in yellow. So you can see the one is still white, that's valid, uh, but these threes are yellow. That just means at least one of them is wrong. Um, so, you know, if I get rid of that three, this one, ah, okay, bad example. This one actually stays yellow because there's also a three already in that column. But if I put the three there, Okay, so that three goes white because that is valid. If I instead get rid of that three, this one also has a... Th I'm choosing really bad examples. Okay, is that going to go white? Yeah, okay. So a white three there and a three over there makes them both yellow. Or if that one goes away, then this one is white. So white doesn't mean it's correct. It means it's a valid position. Um, so it checks with the row, as you saw. Uh, it also checks in the column, so that will turn them both yellow. And as we saw, it also checks... Um, actually, no, did we see that? I don't think we did. Uh, where, let's get rid of these for a second. Get rid of that and that and that. Uh, yeah, this one up here. This grid already has a three in it. So, yeah, if I put one there... That should also turn yellow because there's already a three in that three by three grid. Uh, notice, by the way, that this one does not turn yellow. That is because it's blue and therefore we know it's definitely correct. If you know how the circuit signals work, that's why I chose yellow and not red, because red overrides blue. Uh, but anyway, so let's get rid of that. So now we're in a position that we can solve this. Uh, if you prefer such things, you can turn the error checking off while you solve it. Um, I'm not that much of a masochist, so I'm going to leave it on. And let's see if we can f do the Sudoku. So I guess this is where I introduce a time lapse. <laughs> Okay, never mind, I've already made a mistake because there's nowhere a one can go in that cell. So... Copy... Paste. Let's try that again. Okay, so after a second time getting stuck, I went back to double check the um, like what it's supposed to be, and it turns out that is wrong. That is not even supposed to be there, and this is supposed to be a seven with a blue. Uh, so let me check the other ones in here just to make sure I'm not trying to actually fix an unsolvable Sudoku. Okay. Third time is the charm, I guess. Um, where's that? There. Okay. So that seven is blue, not 
that, well, I think it was a three beforehand, but I guess it doesn't need to be a three. Anyway, all right, this one's still a one, go. <laughs> Okay, so here we are, just two spaces left to fill in. Uh, so this one, here, so well, this center grid is missing a nine and a four, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, four and nine. Uh, four can't go in that row, so that's got to be a nine. And this has to be a four. And this is our other feature. If everything is correct, it all turns green. So yeah, that is feature number two. And you can see that if I change one of these, um, well, firstly, it all goes away. But if I change that to, say, a four, you can see it lights up. I can't have a four there because there's already there's already one in that cell and in that column. There's already one in the row as well, of course, but that's blue, so that's less obvious to see. But you know that something there is wrong. So yeah, it works. So let's delve a little bit more into the actual features of this. So I've got some examples set up here. So this is an individual cell and it's made up of these parts. You've got the lights, uh, you've got just two combinators there, um, a couple of constant combinators with a bunch of numbers and this A signal comes in. And you can see that, that A signal determines what the number actually displays. So A is one, two, three, four, all the way up to nine. Um, or zero, which is nothing. Okay, so how does this work? So firstly, let's um, let's have a look at the lights. So each light, well, some of them just have no condition. They're just there to make a square. But some of them have a condition whether or not it should light up like this. And these are carefully chosen such that um, if the right signals arrive, it will light up to make a number. If you want to do a bit more research, it essentially works the same as a seven segment display, except I think I've got 21 segments to make up the different numbers. Um, okay, so, but how, how do I get those? And that's where this comes from. So, uh, oh, that's what this is all about up here in these combinators. So these combinators here, these arithmetics, uh, this one is the first one, and it bit shifts everything to the right by A. And then this says everything and one output everything. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail, but essentially what this means is this one here, whatever A is, divide everything by two that many times. Uh, and if it's an odd number, just ignore the fraction. So if your answer is uh, 14 and A is 1, A goes to 7. If your answer is 14 and A is 2, you divide by 2 twice. So you go to 7 and then you go to 3.5. Ignore the fraction, so you've got 3. What this does is say, is your answer an odd number? And if it is, output a 1. So you can see here, this one here, uh, if you look at the input and output signals on the right, A is zero, so nothing is actually changing. You're dividing by zero, oh, sorry, you're dividing by two zero times. And you'll notice that all of those numbers are even. So this one here outputs nothing. If I change A to one, come and have a look at this one. You see, so now everything is divided by two one time. So if you look at the copper signal, the copper plate signal, that is, it goes from 16 input to 8 output. This one here then looks for which ones of those are odd numbers. And it turns out, for this case, the odd numbered ones are coal, st or coal stone, iron ore, uranium ore. Uh, I think that's a petrol barrel, a sulfur barrel and a water barrel. Um, and it just turns out they are exactly the signals we need to light up. So there's stone, there's uranium, I've got some barrels down there, and it, it shows us the number one. If I change this to two, then in this one here, they've now been divided by two twice, so different 
number or different signals there are odd numbered, uh, slightly more of them this time. And when we figure out which ones are odd numbers, it gives us the lights we need to make a two. So that's what these numbers are all about. They're not entirely random. They are very carefully chosen such that when you divide it by two a number of times, it will give you the right signals to use the lights. As I said, it works almost exactly the same as a seven segment display. And there are tutorials for those all over YouTube. Um, it's just I'm using more segments to get a more natural looking number. Okay, so that gives us a number. How do we get more numbers? So here, uh, I've got three of these things hooked up. If I set that back down to zero, and you can see we've got a few more combinators this time. So we've still got the, the, like the basic information up there. Uh, there is our bit shift to the right. There is our, is it an odd number? We've got this one here, which it goes through first. So A comes through this one first, and that is the modulo operator. So modulo 10, um, a bit of a hand wavy thing. If I just sort of put 23 in there, um, what this, no, in fact, I'll put two, three, four in there, which I think is actually what was there beforehand. Um, but yeah, if you look at the input and output on the right hand side there, you can see input is 234, output is 4. So mod 10, what that does is it takes the last digit and gets rid of the rest. And then it's that last digit we use to figure out what we need to put in that cell. And then this one next to it, this combinator here, divides it by 10 and ignores fractions, which effectively does the opposite of the modulo. It gets rid of the last digit and only keeps the rest. So here you can see we've got two, three, four. It gets rid of the four, keeps the two, three. And then that's what gets passed on into the next one. So this one then ditches the two, keeps the three, and that's what it shows, the number three. And then this one only changes that into a number two, which gets passed over here and shut. So you can queue these up into more and more numbers. Um, and over here I've used nine. So each row is actually being passed in as a nine digit number. If I have a look down here, uh, this one, no, not that one. No, not that one. This one. Yeah, so it's getting an input A of 357 million and something. Um, and it's outputting just nine A's because it's being bit shifted by, um, Oh, no, it's not being bit shifted, sorry, it's being modulo 10. So it's 357 million something hundred and something to something thousand something hundred and something to nine. We know that last digit is a nine. And in fact, I can tell you it's 357 million four hundred twenty six thousand one hundred eighty nine because that's the number there. OK, so. Um, then what you need to do is you actually need to get the numbers out of the constant combinators. So remember, we're passing it in as an A signal, um, but we're actually getting it in as a bunch of different signals in different channels. So the one through nine instead. So that's what these things down the side are for. Now I'm going to come up to this bit over here, which is a little bit easier to explain. So this bit on the side, that is exactly the same as what's over here. It's just over here. I've separated it out a little bit more so we can see what's going on. So firstly, uh, let's start at this side. So we've got a one in here that gets passed to these three combinators, each of which do exactly the same. They bit shift it left by one, which has the effect of multiplying it by two. So you can see this one gets a one and outputs two ones. And as does that one, as does that one. Now the top combinator here, uh, that passes over to the input of the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one. The second combinator does the same, but it passes it down into the next row. If I come back to here, you can see this combinator here is hooked up with this combinator here, and it goes down. The third combinator, meanwhile, takes care of the three by three grid cells. So that's how we do error checking for rows, columns and grids. 
Um, yeah, so that gets passed over to here, where that's now getting two ones and a two from this cell, and it doubles that, passes it on, doubles it. And by the time we get to the end, we have that. We have 256 ones, 128 twos, 64 threes. You can see what's there. Um, and this, um, yeah, so that's exactly the same. This one just bit shifts it the other way because rather than do something slightly different on the last one, I just undid it again. Okay, and then we've got three things to do. Firstly, we need to change all of those numbers into the relevant A to pass back into here. We also need to figure out, are any of those numbers definitely wrong? I.e. do they need to be flagged up in yellow? If they are, we need to calculate the right yellow value and pass that in as well. If uh, the third thing we need to do is figure out, is it correct? Do the numbers one to nine exist exactly once in that row? Okay. So out here, we've got two lines coming out, a red and a green line. Let's follow the green line first. This comes to the display bit. We need so turning it from numbers into A. So we follow the green cable, it comes down to here. And we'll ignore that bit for the moment. We're following the green cable over here into this section down here. Now over here, we've got lots of these. So and one, bit shift right one and one, right shift one, and one, right shift one. So remember, and one says, is it an odd number? Shift right says divide it by two and ignore the fraction. So this one here, nine is the only odd number. And when you divide everything by two, you actually lose the nine altogether. And eight becomes the only odd number. And then seven becomes the only odd number and so on. So what this does, is even though everything is coming down just one cable there, this turns it back into nine separate signals. So we've got a nine, an eight, a seven, a six, a five, a four, a three, a two, and a one. So if I get rid of the seven, let's have a look at what's going on here. So over here, oh, these ones, by the way, they just multiply it by different numbers. Ignore the output for now, but we've got a 9, an 8, nothing, a 6, a 5, a 4, a 3, a 2, and a 1. So that turns it back from a signal along just one green cable into nine separate signals, uh, just counted backwards going the other way instead. These then multiply everything by a power of 10. So the 1 over here is changed from 1 into 100 million because that's what it is. That's the 100 millions column. So we're turning this now from a binary number into a normal decimal number. 10, uh, not 10 million, 100 million, or 123 million, 456,789. Let's put that seven back. Okay, so once we've got all that, we need to basically just turn everything into an A. So we've got a hundred million ones, so we need to turn that from a hundred million ones into a hundred million A's. So we multiply it by one and output an A. This one here, we've got twenty or we've got ten million twos coming in. And we need to turn that into twenty million A's. So we multiply it by two, output as A, multiply three channel by the number three, output as A, so on, so on. Add all the outputs together and that gives us our 123 million A, which we then feed back along here to here and in up the top there. Okay. Meanwhile, um, we need to do the error checking. So that's what this bit is about. So this section here, so we're taking in those separate numbers. Then we shift them to the right by each place. So shift to the right by five and and one. So what this does is effectively um, say, like, is there a nine or, well, no, actually nine, eight. Yeah, sorry. What this does is say, what is in 
this last place here. And then this is what is in um, the second last place, what is in the third last place. So similarly, this changes it back from the single cable into different channels for each one. And then that comes over here where we say, do we have more than one one? Do we have more than one four? Do we have more than one two? If we have more than one of any number, uh, we output a red signal and then that gets fed into here where we um, multiply it by how, however many there are of that erroneous signal. So if we have just one one, that's fine. If we have two ones, we need to output two signals. And then we multiply that by, oh, sorry, we multiply that by those signals and output H in that case for seven or B for one. It just outputs it on a different channel for each one. And then comes along to this section up here where this one says whatever yellow signal we've already got from elsewhere, we'll just mix that in with B. So if, remember, B is uh, the one signal. So if we have two ones somewhere, make them yellow. If we have two twos, make them yellow, etc, etc, etc. And then at the very end, we do a quick little bit shift just to move things into the right place. This combinator is just like, do we do the error checking or not? If so, pass everything on. And then it's this, it's the same kind of thing right here. We bit shift each time and yeah. So, uh, okay, I know I'm rambling there. Let's uh, have a bit of an example. So let's change that five to a seven. So over here, um, okay, this is, okay, so we've got a nine, an eight, a seven, a six. I'm looking at, uh, by the way, I'm looking at the output signals on the right hand side there. So we've got a nine, an eight, a seven, a six, another seven, a four, a three, a two, and a one. Over here, so we've got exactly one one, so nothing happens. Um, where is the seven? Here. So we've got two sevens, so we output a red, then that comes into this one. And we take that red and multiply it by whatever is on the seven channel. And that comes from back here. So that seven, which is a binary number, which actually says zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, zero. We turn that into an H that says zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, zero. Once we've got that H that comes up to here and you can see that input becomes a yellow signal that says 0001010. It says the right number in binary. <laughs> okay, that is the most complicated bit and I've done a horrible job of explaining it, but I hope you at least kind of got a general idea of where I was going. Um, the last bit is a little bit easier, um, the correct bit checking. So I've split that into two bits. This bit here basically says, is there exactly one of each number? Is there one, 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 two, one, three? And if there is, so if we've got nine eyes, we output a tick. And over here, uh, this just basically makes sure overall that there is a number in every box because just because of how Factoria works. If I change this one back to a five, okay, let's get rid of that seven and put it in that box with the eight. So yeah, you see, I'm not getting any errors there because seven plus eight is 15. So it's put 15 in that box or those two boxes there. So just because you can do something like that, while this one is indeed outputting a tick because there is something in, or sorry, there is one of each number, technically there's nothing in this box. 
So we do not get an output from there. So that's how I'm checking to make sure that there is a valid solution in each row. And remember, I'm doing this for each column and for each 3x3 cell as well. Uh, so they each output a tick. And if we come back to the actual Sudoku, right over here, I've said if we've got 54 ticks, which is two for each row, two for each column, two for each 3x3, three three, then I output a green, which gets fed into everything. And that is a about it actually um so i i'm i'm quite well aware that i could have done a much better job of explaining some stuff there um but what i'll do if if you do have any questions uh come along to the discord and have a chat what am i looking for that um, yeah, do come along to the Discord, have a quick chat with me, and I'll answer what I can. Meanwhile, also in the Discord, I will make available this map as a download. So, that way, you can play with it yourself. So, what I'm doing here, I'm just making sure this works in vanilla, basically. There we go, so that now works in vanilla. I'm not using any um, creative mode stuff. So yeah, the, the map works entirely in vanilla. Um, I'm using the latest version, latest experimental version, though I see no reason why it wouldn't work on older versions as well. Um, I, I've got a couple of mods installed. Um, creative just so I can build it but as I just said I've used no creative items all the power is coming from this nuclear reactor which should run forever in a day um, I've got a couple of like decoration mods just to change how the concrete looks but it should work without um, so yeah it's low effort doesn't look pretty and I could have done a better job explaining what's going on but there you go so I, I did record an outro, but apparently I'm getting a bit tired because my outro went on for about 10 minutes rambling in circles. Um, so I'm giving it another go. If you would like to submit a challenge of your own, the way you can do it is by coming along, joining my Discord, and in my Discord I will put a special channel um, called a Commuter Challenge. I forgot what the series was called for a moment there. Um, yeah. So just pop your idea in there. It uh, doesn't have to be Factorio. It can be any game that you think I will enjoy or that you think has an interesting challenge, uh, although games that I already own will take preference. Um, similarly, um, if you are a patron of my channel, um, link to my Patreon in the description, then you will also get preference over those who are not. Um, I won't be picking randomly, I'm not that much of a masochist. Uh, I will be picking challenges which I think are both interesting um, and challenges that I think are simple enough that I can do during my commute. Remember this is being done on a laptop on a train, so don't expect the world out of this series. Um, yeah, so if you've just got an interesting little challenge, something like this, let me know. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, I will say thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again soon.